Okay, so today we're going to talk about physical processes and physical separations. So that's the topic of today's lecture. Okay, so physical processes and physical separation. So what's a physical process and then what is physical separation? <coughs> so physical processes um, change matter without chemical alteration. Okay, so you're going to get a better understanding of what chemical processes are when we study reactions later, but right now we're going to talk about physical pro processes and what they are. So here are some examples. Example, heating. Cooling, right? And in keeping with those, okay, Boiling, or melting, or freezing, or condensing, okay, etc. We could also have shape deformations. So like, I could physically alter a lump of clay by squishing it, right? That's a, that's a physical process, that's not a chemical process. So like, physical deformation, right? Changing something's shape just by pushing on it or pulling on it, something like that. So here's an example of something that's not a physical change. So if I take this chair, right? This chair is made out of mostly hydrocarbon, okay? It's a plastic. So a bunch of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms, and sure there's some there's probably some oxygen in there too. And you're gonna take the if I take this this chair and I light it on fire, it's gonna turn mostly into carbon dioxide and water. Is that a physical change or a chemical change? Physical. Physical. A lot of us said physical, right? Heating it up, if I if I sit in this thing and I just sort of like heat it up with my body heat, then it, that then that's a physical change. I'm just making this warmer. But if I turn this into totally different chemicals altogether, what kind of change is that? Chemical. chemical change, okay? So for sure, whenever you see something on fire, you've got what kind of change? Chemical, chemical change, okay? But if something is boiling, if, we, if, we, if we're boiling something and we know we're boiling, that's not a chemical change, that's a physical, physical change, okay? So physical separation is a process that uses physical processes to separate mixtures. So physical separation uses physical processes to separate mixtures into simpler or purer components. Okay. So, what we want to think about next before we get into this concept, like this is a really important concept, understanding mixtures. And so when we get into this, this concept of, of mixtures, we need to understand what substances are themselves, okay? So some really important vocabulary, and this overall like umbrella topic of substance <coughs> classification, substance classification. Thought you you having a hard time with one of the words? Where? The physical... Physical deformation. D-E-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N, deformation. Elijah? What's the word next to simpler? Into simpler simple. slash purer, P-U-R-E-R, -E okay? So the next thing we're going to talk about is phys or sorry, substance classification. That ends up being really important in chemistry. So 
substance classification. Okay, so what in the world is that? So, we're going to start with really the simplest way that we define the word substance in chemistry, okay? And that's pure substance. So, pure substances, and I'll capitalize and underline because that's, that's an important vocabulary term. Pure substances consist of one type of chemical. Okay? So only one type of chemical. So what are some examples? So here's one example. Distilled water is pure H2O. Okay? One chemical formula there. One chemical in distilled water, H2O. That's it. Does anybody know how distilled water is made? What is I, did, I didn't know when I was in, in high school either, until I got to chemistry class. Unfortunately, we don't have <coughs> distillation apparatus, but the way that they work is like this. So you, you take some sample of water, okay? And you boil it. And then what you have to have are like a, is, is something called a refl or a, sorry, a condenser. And, and the, the, the water vapor is going to go through the condenser and then into some little collection vessel. Could be a water bottle or a, or a beaker or whatever. But as the water vapor gets cooled, it goes from the gas state back to the liquid, liquid state, right? And then we can collect that liquid water that's been boiled and recondensed. When we do that, we, we separate anything that might be in the water from the pure water, right? So we get back pure water, okay, from distillation. What's the process called? The process is called distillation. <coughs> uh-huh. You boil off the vapor, and then you recollect the vapor as liquid, okay? <coughs> After cooling it down. So pure substances have only one type of chemical. Here's another really cool pure substance that you might know of, right? So here's another example. Diamonds. Okay, discounting any small impurities that are in them are pure carbon. Okay, that's a big C for carbon, the atomic symbol for carbon. So diamonds are pure carbon, right? You can have little tiny impurities in there that, that cause discoloration, but if you, if, especially if you've got like a, like a, a lab-created diamond, you should be dealing with just pure carbon in that case. Okay, unless somebody's purposely in, in introduce some, some impurities, or unless the, the lab creation process is, is flawed in some way, or, in a, or, or uh, yeah, etc. So, pure substances have one type of chemical. Okay, Elijah, quickly. Aren't those the diamonds that are more expensive, the ones that are made in the labs that are like finely cut and everything? <sighs> depends. Depends. Yeah, it depends. So they can be more expensive. They they might not be. I, I I don't remember the market because I'm not I'm not like keeping an eye on that market. That'd be a good research project. Okay. All right. So impure substances AKA what does AKA stand for? Also known as Good. Also known as mixtures. Right? contain more <coughs> than one type of chemical, okay? And mixtures are so important that we define them in two different ways. Chemists run, it, run up against two different kinds of mixtures commonly and have to know how to classify them or how to label them. So there are, are, are mixture classes that we're going to concern ourselves with and the broadest class, or the broadest division, is between heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. So we'll de define those right now, okay? So mixture classification. Okay. So heterogeneous mixtures
can be separated by gravity. Simple filtration. And or simple simple separation. Okay, and I'll, I'll explain what all of that is. So, if you've got a box, right? You've got a box of, give me one of your favorite candy, candies. What, what's one of our M &M's. favorite candies? M&M's, good. I've got, I, let's say I've got a, a, a box full of M&M's, right? What's another, another one is Tootsie Rolls. Okay, great. So, I take my box of M&M's and I combine it in a bag with what's in my box of Tootsie Rolls, right? And suddenly I've got this bag and I, I, I shake, shake, shake the bag and then suddenly I've got a mixture of M&M's and Tootsie Rolls. Okay, if you just wanted an M&M from the bag, what would you do? Just get an M&M. You'd reach in and like simply separate with your hand, right, an M&M from the mixture of M&M's and Tootsie Rolls, right? Are the M&M's the same as the Tootsie Rolls? No. No, you pick out an M&M, right, and you get a different flavor and a different taste than you will if you eat a Tootsie Roll. That's a heterogeneous mixture, okay? Hetero meaning different. So there's not a uniform composition throughout that mixture. There's a very, like there are very different pieces within that mixture, very different components that have very different properties, right? So one good example of a heterogeneous mixture is spaghetti with meatballs. <laughs> right? Another really good one is boba tea. Right? So, how many of us enjoy the occasional boba tea? Right? Okay, a lot of us, right? So, think about your boba tea, right? You take a little, a little sip, and you're like, and suddenly you've got what? Like this tapioca ball, right? And you're like chewing on your tapioca ball, and then like, at the very beginning, right? It's super obvious, you're like, you're like taking your, your initial sip and, right? Suddenly you've got all these tapioca, and you're like, right? And the, the tapioca balls, are totally different in composition and flavor, right? Than what? What else is in the boba tea? It's the tea itself. Yeah, the actual tea, right? So that is totally heterogeneous, okay? Boba tea, not at all a homogeneous mixture. So now I've introduced a new term, homogeneous. So our second type of mixture is called a homogeneous mixture. So homogeneous mixture. Okay, so prefix homo meaning same, right? So homogeneous mixture or homogeneous mixtures have uniform composition throughout. And a quick note is that this uniformity is at the macroscopic level. Okay, so at the macroscopic level, like at the, at the level at which you can see by eye, you can easily like separate out your, your M&Ms and your, your Tootsie Rolls or your meatballs and your spaghetti, right? But at the, at the by eye level, you cannot separate um, heterogeneous, or sorry, homogeneous mixtures for sure. And even, even at a smaller scale, shh, macroscopic level, you can't do that. So it's really not until the molecular level that you start to see differences, okay? So, only at, at the molecular level is there any lack of uniformity in composition. Up until that level, the, the mixture is, is uniform in composition. So, what is a good example of this? Well, here's a good example. Salt water. Okay? Here's another example. Kool-Aid. And another word for homogeneous mixture is solution. Okay? Homogeneous mixtures are known as solutions, right? So, if you want to separate your salt water into salt and water, can you use some tweezers? No. 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 Can you use like a simple filter? No. no. 
Is gravity going to do the trick for you? Can you like leave your glass of salt water on your desk for a while and let gravity just pull the salt down to the bottom? No. No. But here's a question. Here's a, here's a, here's the scoop, okay? So the scoop of the genius. He really just said here's a scoop in life. Yeah, here's the scoop, okay? Got to have the scoop. So here's the scoop. So we've got sand and we've got Believe it or not, this is ocean water from the Pacific Ocean, right? Just good old San Diego ocean water. So here's what we're going to do next time. Shh. We're going to take a little bit of sand, and we're going to take a little bit of ocean water, and we're going to put them in a beaker, okay, which is like a small glass. So you'll get comfortable with that terminology, beaker. We're just starting the year. And we're going to use a filter to get rid of the what? Sand. Yeah, that's clear, right? So when we mix the sand with the ocean water, is that mixture going to be... Heterogeneous or homogeneous? Heterogeneous. And how do you know? Because you can separate the sand and the water by simple filtration. simple filtration, right? But once you've got the ocean water by itself, and the ocean water is salt water, then you've got to separate.